So, Pete, this is your fourth year directing Stafford Festival Shakespeare. What have been your highlights from the last three uh, productions that you've directed? Well, that's a really hard question. I've had a great time with all three of them, and, that, and so have the acting companies that I've, I've been part of. Um, I mean, I suppose there are some, some really big laughs. I remember Eric Potts with his uh, bottle of wine in, uh, oh, in Twelfth yeah. Night, um, pretending to be a statue. Um, I, that was a that was a particular highlight for me. I think that moment. <laughs> um, it was absolutely hilarious, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, but I but uh, I think it's a great event to be part of. You know, audiences come up on that hill expecting to have a good time. We try and create a, a festival atmosphere before the show even starts, so people are walking into an entertainment when they arrive. Yeah. Um, and Romeo and Juliet, although it's the first tragedy that I'll have done, um, has that same welcome into the show. So we've got a fantastic company again this year. Um, what do you think that this year's cast uh, can add to this year's production? Well, it's, an, it's a group of uh, acting musicians, largely, as, as the last three years. So there'll be a lot of music threaded through the show in the, in the pre-show, which is a, a fiesta day in this market square that we've created. Obviously, there's a big ball as part of Romeo and Juliet in the, in the first half. And then these processionals at the end for the, for the funeral and the closing of the show. Mm. So we've decided to set this production of Romeo and Juliet in... In, we're saying somewhere like Havana in 1956, so before the revolution when there was a, a corrupt state, these big powerful families and violence on the streets uh, and a very hot intense atmosphere. So it's got the whole show, I think it's got that hot house feel to it with these Cuban Latin rhythms running through it. We've chosen to set Romeo and Juliet as you've just uh, explained. Now, what would you say to the traditionalists that, uh, that, that only say that you could set Romeo and Juliet in Italy? I think um, we've been quite careful about this choice. I mean, the, the, one of the things that's always appealed to me about um, setting it this way has been the way in which Romeo and Juliet's love story is kind of threaded through with death, that death is almost the third party in this love triangle, that both of them have this premonition about their, their relationship or their lives being doomed almost before they start. Um, and something that I've been interested in since I saw an exhibition on it was the, the uh, Latin American festival of the Day of the Dead when uh, ancestors are, um, are re recalled and, and worshipped and there's a kind of strange, quite macabre festival of people wearing death head masks um, as part of that celebration. So it's a, a cross between a, a festival fiesta day and, and, um, and a funeral I suppose. And we're planning to use that for the ball. So this sense of love in the face of violence and death, I think, will fit that culture and that specific period really well. Yeah, it really suits it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah indeed. Which scene do you think will be most memorable uh, uh, from Romeo and Juliet? Oh, that's really hard. I think that the, the one that, that we all centre on, um, and I think will be uh, an enormous part of this production too, is the balcony scene. Um, we have a, a set which is a representation of a, a square in um, a Central American com country with a big mansion at the back, which has a balcony. So in that, in that sense, that scene, I think, will be staged fairly traditionally. But that moment at which they both discover each other and discover what it means to be really in love. I think the other thing that's, that's occurred to me since I started preparing for the play is how fast it, it all is. It takes place in, in four days. Mm -hmm. So... The, the thing moves at an incredible speed. It's, um, it's like Juliet describes the lightning being there and then not there in an instant. And I think that's how the play feels in a way and how their, their love should feel, that it's there and then it's gone and almost in the blinking of an eye. Okay, um, sort of the show aside now, uh, just about, uh, about you a little bit. I mean, what qualities are essential as a director, uh, Peter? Um, Enormous patience. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I think I, I always think that the job of a director is to serve the play and to um, create an environment in which the actors are liberated and brave and free enough to do uh, the, their best and to, to do their best for the play. Um, so my view isn't that you should try as a, as a director to put yourself between the play and the audience to come up with a, a concept that makes everybody look at the direction. I think the, the important thing for a director is to allow the, the audience to encounter the play as, um, as directly and kind of exciting, excitingly as you, can, as you can achieve. What advice would you give to, uh, to young uh, directors or, or new directors, Pete? <laughs> 
Um, I think to see a lot of work, to see the way that other people work. I mean, I started, um, before I started training as a director, I spent two years as a stage manager, which allowed me to be in other people's rehearsal rooms and watch the way that they worked. And it's a curious kind of thing that once you're a grown-up director in your own right, you never see other directors work, really. So it's an, uh, to get an opportunity to see various people's rehearsal room techniques and to get a, a series of techniques that you can draw on yourself in terms of um, games and exercises and script analysis. I think all that's important. I think an awful lot of it is instinctive. I think in terms of your response to a, a text and in the way that you deal with actors, I think a lot of that is, is following your own natural instincts and, your, and the way that you see the play as you read it. Okay. One final question, Pete. What's your favourite Shakespeare play? Ah, well, probably one of those massive ones, like King Lear uh, or Hamlet. Um, I've never directed either of those. Uh, never yet got a company uh, massive enough to tackle either of those. But, you know, there's a challenge, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we have a chat about that. Lear with laughs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right, well, thanks so much, Pete. Thanks for taking time out of the rehearsal room anyway. And uh... <laughs> that's it.